okay then i'll start with api led connectivity okay most of the time what are, what will be the questions in api led connectivity okay they may ask you explain api led architecture then api led architecture model is one of the best practices specified by mulesoft in designing and developing apis okay it is widely used across the industry we follow a three layer approach in api led architecture that is system layer process layer and experience layer okay all apis developed in the system layer are connected to external systems such as database third party api salesforce system to fetch the data we don't apply any business logic in the in this system layer but send the data to the process layer we'll just collect the data we'll just collect the data and then we'll pass the data to process layer okay then <laughs> process layer we apply the business logic required on the data it, it acts as a intermediate layer between systems and process layer exactly systems and experience layer The process API sends the response to the experience layer. Okay, fine. Now, experience layer APIs are exposed to the clients such as mobile applications or web applications. These APIs are just a wrapper. A wrapper means what? We are just wrapping them around the process API or system API. We are not doing much functionality there exactly. Okay, and all non-functional policies will be applied in experience layer. Okay, experience layer because more security is required because we are exp exposing them to the external world, right? Or the clients, right? Or the consumers, right? That is the reason more security will be available on experience, experience layer. Okay, fine. If you understand this and tell this, this is more than sufficient. Okay. Nowadays, they are not trying to ask this. They are trying to little more than this, exactly. Maybe a scenario-based question, that kind of example. Okay, fine. They may ask you, why do you require more experience APIs rather than one for the same requirement? Okay, this is the question. Now, it depends on the business requirement, the number of experience APIs to be created. It depends on the business requirement. I'm telling the example. The business team gave a requirement and there are two experience systems mobile application and web application which are consuming the experience api but mobile api requires less data when compared to the web application in that case we have to develop two different experience apis to fulfill the requirement yes sir we discussed this example right if you remember see uh, why we require two experience apis mobile da mobile api required less data that is one instance and uh, web application uh, experience api require more data that is the reason we are trying to go for two different experience apis one for mobile api mobile mobile application one for web application other example is the experience api is being consumed by third party and internal systems okay third party and internal systems in this case, there is an extra policy applied when the API is being consumed by third party. Okay, third party system or API, for example. But the same is not required in case of internal system. So we have to deploy two experience APIs. Here, one in one use case, we require more security. In other use case, we don't require security. Right? Then you have to do it right? exactly for that reason. That is the reason we do we go for what to say different experience APIs. Now you understood right in what kind of instances you for example mobile application web applica web application both require the same data same policies. Do you want two different experience two different experience APIs or single experience APIs? Single experience. Because the expectation is same, then why do go for and why do waste the resources? Got it? Based on this, you may get some scenario based questions exactly. You try to analyze that and tell that. Okay. Is that clear? And it may not be mandatory all the time. It depends on the business requirement. 
for example I, I i told one more point also sometimes process layer will not be there directly from experience api system api also can be caught okay got it right fine now why do, why should we follow api led architecture okay one we know right reusability for example like the, the same system api uh, can be reused by multiple uh, departments in the organization itself for, for example okay there is one reusability limited functionality will be affected when there is any break obviously right for example if there is some break and only limited functionality will be bro broken otherwise the if it is monolithic or uh, you are combining everything into one application what happens the entire uh, services will be broken right okay that is the reason i have written it as limited functionality will be affected when there is a any break time to market will be faster in the long run why in the initial stages we have <clears throat> developed <clears throat> all the things required when a new requirement comes already reusable components are available just whatever is required you need to develop that and get into the market right that is the reason time to market will be faster in the long run not in the short run in the short run you require more time because you need to divide them you need to properly segregate them and then check out which is reusable which is not reusable all those things and then decide right it will take little time in the initial setup exactly but after that in the long run it will be faster okay then they may ask you also what are the disadvantages then okay then then you can discuss the disadvantages also instead of one api we are developing three api so it takes more time in the initial phases right as we are developing more number of apis we require more v cores okay and it will co increase cost okay the, in the these are the two disadvantages in api led architecture exactly now see how to establish communication between system process and experience layers what is the normal way we are following with the help of http requester right okay i told you two ways exactly 99 percent of the time uh, http requests are used to establish uh, communication and we can expose api as a connector also we can publish it to exchange and then with the help of dependency you can call that exactly that is also but most of the time they try to use http request connector only And they may ask you explain api lifecycle in view whenever i have attended recently one of the client interviews right i told you they asked me ex uh, to explain me api lifecycle okay now what are the steps in api lifecycle design implementation testing deploy monitor covers api lifecycle okay in design phase what what we'll try to do api specification is designed using raml in design center and then published to exchange Ask the business users to give the feedback and make necessary changes if required. That is the initial phase. And then implementation. In implementation phase, generate RAML based flows in AnyPoint Studio and start implementing the code. Develop M units, apply security policies and test local. Then testing. In this phase, the QA team will extensively test the application and raise bugs. Solve the bugs and ask the testing team to retest. We have discussed all these things if you remember. So that's the reason I'm trying to not explain here. I'm just reading it out okay deploy after successful testing deploy the application to the prod see in the initial phase dev sit uat will be there right the performance testing or the sit testing all those i crossed exactly okay deploy monitor in this phase logs monitoring and troubleshooting happens okay with the help of visualizer and any point monitoring monitoring okay Okay, any questions in the ABA led connectivity? See, the other kind of question will be they will tell you there are three different systems. Okay, and uh, there are two different uh, consumers. Okay, and then 
how many APIs in minimum level you will try to develop exactly. Okay, now what, what happens for each and every system, one system API, okay, and uh, uh, keep processing as one, for example, minimum experience. There are two different systems, okay. You can tell two, one, two, three, five, two experience systems, one process API, and three system, five, right, total. Five or six? Six, sorry, sorry, six. Six APIs are required. Based on the logic, if both experience system require only one API, I'll try to develop one API. Then also five is also possible. If the required things or the requirement is different in terms of the experience layer, then I'll go for two experience API. If you explain this, that is more than sufficient. Exactly. Is that clear? Yeah, any other questions?